Hey there folks, Graham here. Welcome to the channel. Today we're talking audio interfaces, in particular the Behringer Euphoria UMC 404HD 24-bit up to 192kHz audio interface. We're going to have a look at some of its features, we're going to compare it versus some of its competition, and we're going to see if it really is one of the best value audio interfaces you can get for your money. If you like what you see, then please remember to subscribe and ring that bell for future content. But for now, let's get started. So what have we got? Well, we've got a nice little audio interface in a full metal chassis. Um, got a nice little bit of weight to it. And I must say this thing is built like the proverbial tank. But what features does it have? Let's start with a look at the front panel. On the front panel, we have four inputs, which are XLR and quarter inch jack combination inputs. So you can use either or um, to plug your inputs in. Um, for each of the inputs, we've then got four sections here, and for each input, there is a, uh, a line instrument setting, a pad button for reducing the level of the input if you've got a really hot signal coming in from it. Um, we've got a gain knob, and I must, see, must say that these, uh, these work nice and smoothly. They've got a nice little bit of resistance to them as you move them. Um, and then there's a clip and a signal indicator. So the signal, you can see whether your source is coming in, and also it will clip red if you are clipping at all. So we've got those for each of the input sources. And then over on the right hand side here, we've got a stereo mono switch, does what it says, it reduces the signals coming from the input from stereo to mono if you want them to. We've got a mix button and what this does is this mixes the sources coming in. So for example, I have a, a mixer coming in to the uh, audio interface for my hardware instruments and then all my VSTs are coming in through the USB and this mix gives me a mix between the VST signal from the computer and the hardware signal coming from the mixer. So pretty much I leave that set in the middle. There's then a main out switch which controls the volume from the main out on the back, which we'll see in a second. Headphone volume and headphone socket and then a MIDI in and out indicator so you can see whether or not MIDI signals are being received. So a pretty comprehensive front panel and everything really that you need in an audio interface such as this. So let's have a look at the back panel. On the back, we've got four insert sockets, quarter inch jacks for external effects units if you want to run them through the audio interface. We've got the main out, which is for running to your studio monitors, which can either be XLR or quarter inch jacks. We've then got a set of playback outputs, which are effectively for additional monitoring options. And these are either quarter inch jacks or RCA, and there's two of those. There's then a phantom power switch. So if you've got microphones, etc., plugged in directly that need phantom power, then this interface caters for your needs. We then have a MIDI in and out the USB socket, which is the sort of printer cable type USB. I think that's a USB-B, not quite sure. Um, and then we have the power in. So how is this all connected together in real life? Well, let's have a quick look. So here's the layout of my studio and how everything's connected to the audio interface. Up in the top left, I've got my mixer to which all my hardware instruments are attached with the main left and right outputs running into inputs one and two on the front of the audio interface. I've got my TC Helicon, which my microphones run through. That is running into input three, and then my electric guitar runs directly into input four. I then have my headphones attached for monitoring, and I can adjust the volume in my headphones using the dial directly on the front of the audio interface. Then on the rear panel, I've got the left and right main outs running to my main studio monitors that I use for monitoring mixes, etc. when making music. I then have one set of the additional playback outputs running to another set of speakers on my desk, which effectively I just use for sort of basic listening um, rather than actual monitoring. I then have an FCB 1010 MIDI pedal board running into the MIDI in. This effectively I use the pedal board to control guitar effects such as Guitar Rig Pro and VST Amp Rack. 
and running these through the MIDI in socket of the audio interface enables all of that. And then finally, we have the USB connecting the entire system to the computer and to my door, which is Cubase Pro. So as you can see, in terms of connections on the interface, uh, you're well catered for, and I've got a number of connections still available if I wanted to connect other pieces of equipment, etc., to the unit, such as we mentioned earlier, uh, things like effects pedals, if I wanted another monitoring option, etc. So what do I think of it? Well, for me, it performs perfectly and does its job and has everything I need from an audio interface. But what's it like versus its competition? Well, it would appear that its main competition would be the Focusrite Scarlett 18i8 audio interface and the Steinberg UR44 audio interface. Now that we've got all three of them on the screen, I think you can pretty much see that the Behringer is sort of a clone of the UR44 in its looks and its color, and I'm sure that was some inspiration for how Behringer designed it. Both the Focusrite and the Behringer offer 24-bit up to 192 kilohertz recording, and the Steinberg UR44 offers 32-bit up to 192 kilohertz recording. The Behringer is USB 2.0, whereas both the Focusrite and the Steinberg are USB 3.0, if that's important to you. Overall, the specs of these three units are very similar. They all have four inputs, either XLR or quarter inch jack. They all have line and instrument switches, pad switches, gain knobs, etc. And they all have a very similar number of inputs and outputs on the back panel as well. In terms of fidelity, considering that the industry standard for CDs and MP3s has always been 16-bit and 44.1 kilohertz, and even HD streaming services today like Amazon HD, Tidal, etc. are 24-bit 48 kilohertz, then all of these interfaces will satisfy your needs perfectly. And if you're really wanting to go to sort of high quality video production, etc., then again, all of them will go up to 192 kilohertz to really give you that edge on your sound recording. Now, given each of these units looks pretty comparable on paper, I guess the only thing left really is the price. Well, I've had a dig around online and as a caveat, these are the prices at the time that I've made this video. I had a search around the Focusrite Scarlet, cheapest I could find was 312 pounds. The Steinberg UR44, cheapest I could find was £244. The Behringer, £98. £98. I'm not joking. I honestly don't know how they can produce such a good quality unit for that money, but they do and I'm not complaining. So in conclusion, I don't own the other two products so I can't truly compare them, but from what I've looked at, what I've read and owning the Behringer here, it works perfectly for me, it functions perfectly, it's, it's a nice looking little unit, um, and it does everything that it says on the tin. And for the price, when I compare it to the others, it does appear to be very, very good value for money. Some people might shy away from Behringer products. I know I've heard lots of stories about people from Behringer in the past. To be honest, I own a lot of Behringer gear, and I've never really had a problem with any of it. And some people maybe don't like the fact that a lot of their products seem to be very similar um, to other products out there, let's say. But when you're producing quality gear for a good value price, then, well, you, you take your choice. It's entirely down to you. Well, that's my view on the Behringer UMC404 HD audio interface. This is a completely independent opinion. I have no vested interest in Behringer. This is a product that I bought for myself and thought would do a little review to show you what it's all about for anyone that's interested in purchasing an audio interface in the future. If you've got any questions on what you've seen in this video, then please feel free to leave them in the comments down below and I will do my best to answer them. Or indeed, if you just want to leave a comment or any other feedback, then please feel free to do so. All feedback is very much appreciated. Also, if you have enjoyed this video, then please don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell for future content. But for now, I've been Graham, 
Take care and catch you later. Mm.